Well, I recently spoke about the performance bifurcation in the US stock markets. Now you can see a video discussing just that if you follow this link here. Today, what I wanna talk about is how that bifurcation extends outside of the US. So what am I talking about here? What I'm talking about, here's the US chart we looked at before. The point is markets are reaching all-time highs and everyone's talking about the Dow's at an all-time high, the S&P's at an all-time high, the NASDAQ's at an all-time high, everything's at an all-time high. And if we break it down, we see that this, this outperformance is tilted towards large cap growth and away from small cap value. So we see that everything is not rosy at every point in the market. Now, it turns out this is not true just in the US. It's true across, across the globe. So we can see here, you know, the NASDAQ doing very well year to date, S&P 500 doing well, um, not as well. And then we see kind of Europe and the UK still underwater year to date. So yeah, again, all time highs in some places and not in others, right? So you can also can look kind of across the globe. So yeah, so we have seen, you know, China doing very well, the US doing well, kind of India, New Zealand, parts of Europe doing well, and the rest of the world not doing that great, right? So again, things are different. Uh, we can, of course, break this down. We look at kind of year-to-date numbers uh, for the world in ACWI, emerging markets. You can see that all these are positive, right? So that's, that's good. It's not at up as much as maybe US markets as we just saw, but these are up. But if we break this down into sectors, we're going to see what? You know, that technology is really a driving force of these positive numbers, right? We saw that with US markets in that previous video. We also see that consumer discretionaries have also done very well uh, during this time. But, but on the flip side of the coin, we see that, you know, energy has not done very well at all, right? So again, there's this bifurcation of performance numbers we see in the market. So even though we're seeing, you know, good numbers kind of on that aggregate, underneath it's a lot of different things are going on, right? So we can also think about factor exposure. So to help understand why certain things are doing well. So here, here's energy, right, in, in, in MSCI. And we can see that in general, you know, it has a pretty low exposure to momentum, pretty high exposure to yield, has a, a reasonably high exposure to value. It's a little bit smaller. So we can understand that, you know, given the fact that the names that are doing well are these large, growthy, high momentum names, it makes sense, at least, for, at least from a factor perspective, why energy hasn't done so well. So just another way to think about, you know, you know, stocks and sectors and industries, you can also think about factor exposure. So I wanted to throw that in there for you. Um, of course, yes, we can talk about industries, we can talk about individual stocks, we did that before, you're going to see the same thing. So depending on where you look, there's totally different pictures, you need to understand that. Um, and, and at least when you're looking at those headlines, and all they're talking about is everything looks hunky dory, because everything's at all time high, it really isn't right. So it's just it's a different market in different places. Anyway, hope you find that interesting. Thanks so much for listening.